Join us now with this view on the Fed and the central bank's uh, market impact. Steve Eisman, uh, senior portfolio manager at Newberger Berman. And we've had you on enough that, that I, I, I'm always a little bit hesitant to try to ask you for big picture, top down analysis, because a lot of times you, you don't really want to want to go there. I actually have an opinion on this one. Good. You have an opinion on this one. But I'll just start by, by saying we're, we're in kind of an, uh, an interesting environment where we're definitely worried that the economy, for Fed reasons and for Fed cut reasons, we're worried that the economy is staying strong and that inflation... I think it's more than staying strong. It's actually, I think it's, there's been a reacceleration. But we're also worried right. that there's going to be a recession because the Fed is going to have to engender one. To tame it. So we're worried about the economy is too strong and there might be a recession. So, it's, so everybody's it's, hoping for a little bear's porridge. Exactly. Right. Something just right. Because right. we're worried. And, and has that ever happened? Can we really orchestrate that? Yeah, we have it right now. Everybody should just relax. <laughs> so that sh- is, that, is that your view right no, now? My, my view is um, I feel that ever since Greenspan was in charge of the Fed, the Fed has always been extremely insensitive to its own impact on markets. And, you know, when Powell said, was it last, I think it was last week, it feels like an eternity ago, that financial conditions are tight, I was like, what planet are you on? So, I mean, my view is the economy is fine. There should be, I personally think there should be no Fed cuts this year. And, you know, the market will do whatever the market does, but the economy is fine. Why would you cut, you know, my, my actual fear is that if the Fed were actually to cut rates, the market goes into so it becomes, I guess, bubblicious, and then and then we have a real problem. So, you know, things are good. The, the Fed should do nothing and 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 wait for data to get weak because the, we, there's no weak data. We we st- we still argue about: Do you look at rates in absolute terms, or do you look at them as you know? That, because that, in absolute, that, that debate bores me. At but this it, point. but in absolute right. terms, it really does. They're not in absolute terms. They're, in they absolute don't terms, seem high, they're not but high. they're up 500 basis points. So what? And and well, has anything it? bad happened? Nothing. Bad no, has that's happened. what I mean. So, I, so I remember seven and eight percent, and businesses did just right. fine. So the, the economy is good. I actually think, like I said, it's it's, it's reaccelerated somewhat. Why would you? On what basis would you cut? Some rates? people think that the, the shock of 500 basis points has dislocated. Then yeah, well, they've been talking SVB about that shock for the last two years, and the economy it stays fine. So you why know, what, what's causing the Fed to talk about six rate cuts six months ago? My personal opinion is I think Powell is a, as deep down as just a dove. Just he's always been a dove. He you know raising rates was out of character for him. He had to do it, and he, he wants to cut rates. But I, I at this point. You know, not that anybody ever calls me, but, you know, I would just do nothing. You know, why would you do something when the economy is fine? You don't think we need to raise? No, I don't. But actually, my fear is that if they cut, that, we'd have that, to that, that eventually we'll actually. actually have to raise. That would be the worst possible thing that could possibly happen. So, you, you know, one of the things I've learned as a portfolio manager is one of the, maybe the hardest thing to do as a PM is to do nothing. Because it, it's so easy to actually do something. And it's the same thing with the Fed. It's so easy to do something. They could cut whenever they want to cut. The hardest thing to do is just to sit back and say, okay, everything's fine. Let's just sit and wait. And if things get a little weak, then we can cut. You, you don't think there's, you said bubblicious. We're not, are we pre bubblicious yet? I mean, we're getting it. I, I mean, look, the, the market, is, but, but the fundamentals are really good. You know, one thing I always think about is, you know, 1999, 2000, when the market definitely was in a bubble. But what, what killed the bubble was not that it was a bubble. What killed the bubble was that the Fed raised rates a lot and put the economy into a recession. It was the recession that killed the bubble, not that it was just so per se a bubble. So what do you think bubble. is driving this economy, though? Is it <clears throat> new productivity gains that somehow AI is coming? That's I, I mean, really I, I think the two, the two the, big things that are happening right now. What's the, no, I don't think it's the liquidity per se. I think what's, what it, it's real fundamental is that there's real AI, there's real investing, and there's tremendous amount of money being spent on infrastructure. And there's still a shortage of jobs, so the consumer is fine. It's, it's a nice, you know, it is, it is uh, you know, a little bear's porridge in a way. So why would you spoil it by raising rates, well, by see, lowering rates? But just going back to, like, 2000, like the, the idea of a bubblicious situation at that point, you said it was the Fed raising rates that made it. I mean, the Fed raised rates and then made business models where you were making no profits. Right, but, today, but, but today, the, the, the companies that people talk about are real companies that have real revenue, 
that have real earnings. I mean, look, at, look, NVIDIA's agreed, earnings are tripled. That, that right. it wasn't necessarily the Fed just raising rates. The Fed raised rates, and then it was no. But then the economy actually went into models, recession. The speculation went out of the market. Can I ask a question that may may seem political? We're in a, sure. we are in an election year. Yes. And depending on the political channel you watch, uh, you might be told that the economy is terrible and that uh, folks are spending. You know, inflation is run away. Right. Costs of everything are up. Everything is, you know, the, 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 the sky is falling. Right. And then I'm hearing you, as someone who's in the markets, say the economy is great and that this is actually like a Goldilocks. Please moment. don't say that word Goldilocks. It's very, okay. very well, sensitive. Little, little, whatever you, you want to call it. <laughs> little bear. Larry Cudlow used okay. to talk about that. He used to drive me nuts. What, whatever you think it, this sort of moment is, and I'm, I'm hoping that you can um, square the circle, if you will. Of, of, of how these two ideas could exist, and, unless you just and believe that one. say the Biden economy is great and it's not getting credit. It's really where we head with it many get, guests. But it's fair. It doesn't get it doesn't okay. get credit. I mean, look, the unemployment is really low. Wages are still going up. Wages are just finally going up. Right, where for the last people, few years, they're they're below people's spendable income is still below where it was when he took office. That's fair, but the but the trend is up. It has been. And, right. you know, people still have savings. Um, you know, the only thing negative you could say is that there's been inflation, so some things are harder to buy and <laughs> harder to buy. <laughs> but, yeah, a little bit, 30%. But, but, but okay, total. That's, that's fair, but inflation is starting to come down, or yeah, at least it's, not it's coming, flattened the, out. The, the rate of increase is coming down. Right. Okay, but you know, so wages are still going up. All I can tell you is that you're right. calling for deflation, which would be worse. I don't, I'm not right. calling for it. I'm no, I'm calling. Saying, but if he, no, he, nobody wants that. But, but, but the price, but the price increases are there, are in, and for for everything. That's fair. But the only thing I would just say is that there's no sign that the economy is weakening. Right. There are signs that the economy is is getting a little stronger. But if stronger. you're living on, you know, if you're not lucky and you're not like us, you go to the grocery store and you're buying less than you did three years ago. Okay, maybe, but still things are, a are still pretty good well, overall. For us, things are pretty good. No, for most of the people in the country, things are, things are pretty Why good. Why would it be good for most of the people in the country if because they can buy less than it was three years ago? Well, it depends on what, what you're talking about. People, wages are still going up. People are employed. They're, There's a shortage of They're finally of labor. going up, but they're not back to where they were in real dollars three years ago. Okay, so you can't have everything. <laughs> okay, good. Let them eat cake.